Hi, welcome to Awkward Aquaponics. If you've seen our past videos, you've seen us explain how we actually set up our aquaponics system. Now we're at the point where we're cycling the system. So in this video, we're going to explain what we did to actually get to this point. So this is the system as it sits now. Uh, you'll notice it looks a little bit different from a couple of weeks ago. We've added plants, we've added media, we've added water, uh, we've gotten the plumbing to work. Uh, and so we're going to talk a little bit about kind of each of these steps. The first thing we did is we added media to these grow beds. Uh, this is Hydrotten. Uh, we were able to get it at a garden center in town. Uh, it was great because we didn't have to pay for shipping. Uh, but this Hydrotten, when you get it in the bag, it is a little bit dirty. And so over the last little bit we've had students washing this media and then adding it to the grow beds. So to wash this what we've done is we, we, take, we took a garbage bin, we drilled some holes in the bottom of it and students would put in water and they would run that water through the media until it actually ran clear out of the bottom of the garbage can. Once it was clean we added it to these grow beds uh, and we were able to fill it up. In these grow beds we have around 400 liters of uh, media uh, the one thing that was a pleasant surprise actually is that this media wasn't perfectly clean when we put it in, but we found that our pump actually, and you can kind of see the, the filter on our pump, uh, our pump actually was able to catch a lot of the media, a lot of the, the dust and stuff that we weren't able to actually clean off ourselves. The other thing that we've done over the last couple of weeks is we've really tried to dial in the bell siphons and how they were functioning. We initially started out with very simple bell siphons, but we ran into some problems with the bell siphons stopping and then also the bell siphons initiating uh, when the water got above the standpipe. The first thing that we did in order, to stop the, in order to stop the bell siphon from siphoning is that we added a snorkel to it. Uh, this is something that's very common with bell siphons, but we, just, we started simple uh, with the idea that we probably would have to kind of change it over time. So we added a snorkel first, uh, and that helped us stop that bell siphon when it got down below the end of the snorkel. The other thing that we did is that we added a larger opening to the top of the standpipe. We found that it was a little bit difficult to find reducer couplings in Canada. Uh, there's probably a place where you can go and find it. Uh, we ended up finding a company in Quebec, uh, Dubois Agro Innovation, which sold the, the reducer coupling that we needed that we could put on top of our standpipe. Uh, and this helped the siphon get a larger gulp of water at the start. Uh, and so it helps to initiate that siphoning action when we want to actually drain the grow beds. Once we added the media, it was time to add water to the system as well. Our Stealth RO system is a Stealth RO 150, which means that we get 150 gallons in a 24 hour period. That meant that we had to leave this running for three days in order to have enough water to actually start up the system. Once we did that, we added nitrifying bacteria and we added ammonia to the system as well as seaweed because we wanted to put plants in right away. We have a Red Sea master test kit, but what students have been doing is they've been testing the water parameters each day. So we take a water sample, students are tracking the ammonia levels, pH, nitrite and nitrate, watching the system as it cycles. Once we have that system cycle and the ammonia levels start to come down relatively quickly and the nitrate levels start to stay relatively high, uh, that will be a sign that we're ready to actually add fish into the system. So the other thing that we did is we planted these grow beds. We added some mature plants from other systems that we had throughout the school, but we also added some seedlings. When we planted these seedlings, students actually started them in these peat plugs. They waited until they had they, their first set of adult leaves and then they started to feed them a dilute nutrient solution. And then once the plants were around two inches tall, we transplanted them into this aquaponic system. Having the plants in the system will help to absorb some of the nitrate that is happening as we have the ammonia break down to nitrite and then the nitrate transitions into nitrate. Uh, the plants will just give that nitrate some place to go. 
So other things we added to the system in order to help that cycling process, and things that we're going to need eventually when we add fish to the system anyways, is we added aeration. So we have two 10-inch uh, air stones. And we also added an 800 watt aquarium heater. The heater we put in the sump. We're hoping that by putting it there, it leaves maybe a little bit more room for fish in the actual tote itself. And we don't have to worry about fish coming into contact with that heater. Uh, but in, in the tote itself, we added uh, these two 10 inch air stones, which are going to provide the oxygen that the system needs. We also have these pretty neat new log sensors at our school. So we were able to actually test the water for oxygen saturation. So it was great to see that how much oxygen was actually being added to the system by those air stones. So yeah, that's Awkward Aquaponics for today. If you like what we're doing, make sure you hit subscribe. The next step for this system will be adding fish. So make sure you follow along as we add fish to the system and, and really bring this aquaponics vision to fruition.